is on Ted on his and, and his accordion. Uh, so we're gonna get, dive right in, but let's get to know Ted a little bit better and his musical background. All right, hi. Oh, hi. I'm Ted. I'm Molly. Nice to meet you. Nice. So nice to be here with you today. <laughs> Good to be with you. <laughs> All right, now let's, uh, let's talk about you, okay? Your okay. first instrument was what? Drums. Second instrument. Piano. Third instrument. Alto saxophone. Fourth instrument. Uh, Piano accordion. There we go. We're going to stop right there. Fourth instrument was a piano accordion. Mm -hmm. And what age, grade? I would have been somewhere around eighth grade, ninth grade. Okay. That vicinity. Now, Ted has played with many, many bands. Your first band on accordion. On accordion uh, was actually with a country group that also played some rock and roll. Okay. Um, we played for like the horse races at the county fair. They were called Gene and the Gang. And... Uh, offshoot of that was a band called the Polka Brats. I take that back. Actually, it may have been the Happy Times Polka Band, my uncle's band. Okay, well, there you go. So, yeah. Right here in uh, Northwest Ohio. Northwest Ohio. <laughs> it's the Northeast. You know where we're at, right? Yes, I do. Northwest. Okay, um, then I know you played with several bands. You recorded with several bands. Mm -hmm. um, name two of those bands right now. Uh, Toledo Polka Motion and uh, John Gouda. There we go. And he didn't even mention our band. And that's totally okay. <laughs> well, you said played in past tense. This so is true. I'm still like actively playing all the time. This is with true. Box. This well, is true. We would be if we weren't on lockdown here. Yes, but we're actively playing every day. Every day. That's there right. we go. Yes. Okay. So that's a little bit of his history. Um, this has been his life, and uh, he knows so much about the accordion. He plays it very, very well. Um, so he is the man to go to to learn a little bit about the accordion. Um, so, Ted, let's start on your right-hand side. Okay. Well, the right-hand side, as many people will recognize, is set up just like a piano, hence the name piano accordion. Um, and, I mean, that really is all there is to know about the actual notes on the right-hand side. It's just like a piano. The only thing you have to do is add air. So if you push the notes and you don't move the bellows, you get no sound other than the clicking of the of the notes. Okay. And as a piano player, I just want to know this observation. These are thinner keys in the piano. So if you get used to the way the piano feels, and then you play this, it's, it's different. So it's pretty amazing how you can jump from the piano to the piano chord again like there's no tomorrow. And it's also very different from the perspective of uh, the way that you're playing with your hands being down like this when you're playing on a piano yes. versus uh, sideways. It's a different It's a different feel. Okay. So I see you at times, Ted, go like this with your arm quickly. You hit this. Yes. On the side of my accordion here, there is a master shift. And uh, this has to do with the voicing of the reeds in the accordion. Okay, so there's reeds inside here. Is that, I'm assuming that's how you get your sound from that the accordion. That is correct. There are little reeds that sit in blocks, and when air passes through them, the reeds wiggle. They move. Mm -hmm. They vibrate, and that's what creates the sound. Okay, as a woodwind player, I think of a reed being wood. It's just, well, it is very similar. These mm -hmm. are actual metal, okay. but it's very similar to like a mouthpiece on a clarinet or a saxophone where the reed vibrates and that's where your sound starts. Okay, so we talked about the keyboard itself. We talked about this master switch. Now, you've got a lot more things happening over here than that. Yes, on this particular accordion, I've got all of these individual shifts over here, and what they do is they basically give you different sounds. So I'll kind of go through them so you can hear what the difference is. Um, this is called the bassoon. And if we go on up here to the bandonian, the oboe, accordion, the uh, harmonium, the violin, musette, clarinet. I can't see what that. That's Although, an oboe, I think. Yeah. And you got your piccolo. And then there is one shift where you don't play any wrong notes. It shuts everything off. Ah! I had no idea that was there. Yeah. As a nasty trick, I could do that to you, son. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> it may not be that nasty, depending on who's listening and how I'm playing that day. Ah! Okay, so um, now for those that are musicians, I've never played this. This is very similar to the way an organ works with the stops, if that helps correlate that for you. Um, now, everything else on here, that's all electronic based. Correct. On the right hand side, everything else that's here, all these uh, these uh, knobs and, and little push buttons are all for the electronics in the accordion. This has uh, a MIDI system installed, and MIDI is a 
just a way for it to send a signal out uh, to be able to create different sounds in other program or in other pieces of equipment, more or less. Mm -hmm. But we're just talking about the yes, we are. Uh, mechanics of an actual accordion. So uh, you've got the master. Now, the nice you're asking about this master. Yeah. So if I'm playing here on the musette switch and I hit that master, it always takes it back to the full setting. Yeah. Yes. Um, so let's go to your left hand next. Okay. I got more questions about this in general, but let's go to your left hand next. For musicians, you're gonna be like, oh, this makes so much sense. For those that are not, good luck following. Okay, but let's start <laughs> over here, Ted. Um, okay. Let's start your very inside row. Let's talk about that one. So the, uh, the top two rows, the two rows that are closest to the bellows are uh, bass notes. You got your bass and your counter bass. And they're one single five, notes. However, they all travel in the circle of fifths. So this is your middle C. It's usually notated by a, a little indent in it, or there's a diamond or some sort of okay. a gem that's in there, so you can find it easily. Mm -hmm. And as you move up on right. the accordion, it's going to go from C to G to D okay. to A to E to B, and on and on, right mm -hmm. on up the, the way. So. As you go down, however, it goes down appropriately. So you go from C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, so on and so forth. Okay, now follow this, do a scale. Now here's what's cool about this. Yeah. I'm gonna play a scale here. Now I'm gonna move all the way over here. Or here. If you're watching and you're catching, the pattern is the same. No matter where you are, whether you're up high, down low, or anywhere in the middle, the pattern stays the same. Yeah. So it's it's really interesting because that left side is, even though I understand it, it's really it's still foreign to me. And to see you play it the way you do, but then understanding there's um. I don't want to call it cheating, but there's ways you can just you can make things happen over there. So we've covered. It's very the... intimidating. That's it what is. people. There's a hundred. This is a full size accordion, and it means and a full size accordion generally has 120 buttons on the left hand side mm -hmm. and 41 keys on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. uh, so 120 buttons, people get really intimidated, but it really is rather simple from a perspective of once you learn uh, the patterns. Yeah. It follows along. So yeah. we covered the first two rows. We did. We did. Um, I'm just thinking about this while we're on the 120. You're only playing with four fingers, not the thumb, correct? Correct. Okay, so 120. Um, that's that's 30 buttons per uh, finger. <laughs> I just thought about that. Okay, now let's move on. Okay, so we covered first two rows. The yep. next row is what? So then the next row is a chord. So it's comprised of three notes. So this is your major chord. And it corresponds to whatever your bass note is. So here's my C. Yep. Okay. All right. There we have it. So then, as we move out one more row, mm -hmm. then we have a minor chord. C E flat G. Mm -hmm. Then, as we move on, the next row is a seventh chord. Can you sing that too? Sure. While you're at it. And then as you move out to the very last row, you have your diminished chords. Or as a lot of people call them demolished chords. Uh, so that's there all the go. way on the outside. So when so and you're following this angle, is that correct as you're going out? Um, well, I'm just... Yes, yeah. So go. that's how that works. Okay. In a nutshell. There we go. So um now let's oh wait, you have a couple more things over here. Like what yes. are the, you have these? So similar to the right hand side, there are shifts over here. Um, that um, change the sound on the left hand, just like they do on the right hand. So that is the no wrong notes button. Ah, the mute. I like that one. And then uh, and it has a master, uh, so you can switch back and forth between. So that's a basic accordion. Now, Ted does more than just a basic accordion. Beyond electronics, he has learned to uh, do the 
push, or there's several names you could call for, I'll call this. Yeah, generally everybody refers to it as, as shaking or bellow shaking. Mm -hmm. And that is the act of uh, moving the accordion in such a way that the bellows are turning it into a rhythmic instrument. Similar to like when you would think of somebody strumming on a guitar, chunka, mm -hmm. chunka, chunka. You could do the same type of thing with the bellows of the accordion, and that's called bellow shaking. And people do it in different ways. Yeah. And everybody has kind of finds their own method that works for them. What tends to happen for me when I bellow shake is it's kind of like a piston on a steam engine where I'm going kind of forward and backwards with my arm as I'm bellow shaking. So, and generally speaking, the top of the bellows will stay together while the back are the ones doing most of the movement. So, However, there's all different ways. There is no wrong way unless you're doing it out of time. Um, there is no wrong way to actually bellow shake. So you have regular bellow shaking and then you can get into more uh, uh, advanced. A lot of times with the professional players, you'll hear them do triple bellow shaking. Which I'm not very good at because I don't have to do it very often, but you get the idea. Yeah. And you tend to, as musicians speak and we count, you stress the and, one e, and a two e, and a three e, and a. Because I, I'm trying to line up with the uh, crack of the snare drum for okay. rhythmic purposes for the band to play tighter, mm -hmm. as well as, uh, and if the band's tighter, it's easier, I believe, for the people to be able to dance. Okay. Or just groove with the music, even if they don't dance. Okay, I have a question, and I don't know if you even have the answer for this one. And okay. I know musicians out there and those that are just simple amateur musicians have the same question. How can you control and do the bass line so well as you as you bellow shake? Well, for me, I really honestly, I don't even think about it. I've played, mm. you know, accordion long enough. When I first started, that was one of my real issues, okay. was being able to play together the left hand and the right hand. And it boiled down to just learning <laughs> to do a simple, do simple stuff on the left hand side and slowly add, add in the right hand. And it took a real while. I just heard you say something. I didn't know you did this. You practiced? Mm, when I first started, <laughs> I did. You got so much talent in you. Okay, so I hope that answers a lot of your questions. Ted, do you have anything else that you know people have been asking that I didn't I didn't touch on today? Yeah, a couple a couple of things. Okay. Uh, a lot of people ask what kind of accordion do I play? Oh, yes. So my personal favorite full size professional accordion is uh, Potosa. Uh, they're a company in uh, Washington State in Seattle area, and. I believe they make one of the absolute finest accordions uh, present day. I own two of these Potosas that are identical uh, because with our touring schedule, we have different climates that we're in and out of all the time, heat, cold, humidity, dry. And so occasionally you'll have issues. Very seldom do I ever have issues with my Potosas, but I always have two mm -hmm. uh, just in case that are identical. Um, extremely dependable, great quality. Uh, what I love about the Potosa specifically for the accordion players out there is I like the balance between the left hand and the right hand when it comes to weight. Uh, mm -hmm. Some accordions, it feels like you can kind of push it around your body because it's either too lightweight or you'll feel like the left hand is too light or too heavy to match. I personally find that the weight between the left and the right hand is ideal for me with the Potosa accordions. And of course, you can visit their website. It's Potosa.com, P-E-T-O-S-A.com. Uh, uh, link below. Yep, we'll have the link down there mm -hmm. so you can check them out. Um, but one of the finest accordions made. So that's one of the, one of the big things. Um, the other thing that a lot of people ask is, you sound just like a bass player when you're playing the mm -hmm. bass. This is true. And one of the things that I've always tried to keep in mind is when I'm playing left-hand bass, and using my MIDI, so it sounds like a bass guitar, which we'll get into in another video, uh, but I try to think and play runs like a bass player would be playing. So, you know. So thinking like a bass player will help make that sound more like 
electric bass. Yeah. We've always said the more you know about music in general, what everyone's part is in the band, the better you'll play. And that's very obvious that Ted is very aware of that because that's why he plays what he does. I mean, uh, yeah. all around, you just do. And there are digital accordions out there, uh, mm -hmm. such as Roland makes one. Um, there's uh, Boogery makes another one as well. Um, I've tried them. Um, they're fun instruments to play, uh, but I just prefer the sound of a regular accordion. And what I love about the Pitosis is I can feel them rumble in my hands. The reeds and the vibration, uh, the keyboard action is incredibly fast uh, and, and a thin action. So I don't have to push down very far. That's something you can actually get adjusted. Okay. Uh, you can get different uh, depths on the keys. So when you push in, these go in very little, uh, which helps me not get stuck on the keys. Helps me play faster. Um, that's something that Potosa can do, or if you have an existing accordion you want some work done on, uh, we have a guy uh, that does a lot of work for me in Wisconsin. His name is Chad Walker, and he is a uh, master worksman on accordions yeah. and has done you know a fair amount of work for me. So for those in the Midwest who are looking for work, uh, I'll have his link also down here on the screen. You can look him up, walkeraccordion.com. Mm -hmm. um, one, one more question before we get to your other accordions. Uh, how much does this accordion weigh? I believe, um, you mean with me attached to it? We're just going to go just the okay, accordion. Just the accordion. I believe this one weighs in at approximately 27 pounds, although I'm not positive about that. All I know is when I got to carry it from the bus to the stage, I'm like, oh, I'm done carrying it. And I have to carry it like 20 to 60 seconds. You know, the fact he's carrying this all night long, I mean, with the exception of our breaks, is pretty, pretty amazing. It's really strong. Yeah, but... I, you can sacrifice weight, but you're sacrificing quality. Yeah. And that's that's one of the, uh, in my opinion anyways, that's so, what I love about these. Why do you choose to stand then when you play? When I stand, I feel like I have better control over the instrument. Okay. And I also, um, this may sound crazy, but there's a certain degree of standing up above the crowd when you're no, performing. It's just, it's a different feeling that you have. You feel more involved with them. And I think they, obviously, they look up to you, uh, not only literally, uh, but also it creates a different perception there. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's just what's most comfortable. Yes. All right. Well, we're going to get to seeing all the accordions that he has here in the studio now. This is my Potosa AM 1100 concert tuned accordion. And it sounds like this. <laughs> Also, with the different shifts, it enables you to play things such as jazz or uh, swing type tunes. And with some of the other shifts, you can get more of a Cleveland style tuning. Tosa AM 1100 accordion, which is what I use at almost every squeeze box performance in the Christmas shows and on all the different recordings that I've appeared on. Hi everybody, this is my Allison Drini accordion. Now this is uh, also a full-size accordion, but it has a different tuning than what my Potosa does. It's actually more of a Cleveland style tuning. <laughs> So that's one of the differences. This also has a shift that is slightly different than my other accordions. It shifts between the master, which you just heard, and the high switch. So by simply pushing the master, you hear the two different sounds. another Potosa accordion. This is uh, also a fun one. This is called a Potosa Artista accordion that I acquired a couple years ago, bought from Potosa as a matter of fact. And what I like about this accordion is number one, it's lighter weight, so it makes sense for strolling. It doesn't weigh quite as much. Secondly, it's tuned very different. Uh, this is a much wetter tune. So that's dry. <laughs> Uh, 
It also has that nice bassoon sound. <laughs> I love the color. They do all kinds of custom painting on these accordions. Uh, this is actually the one that Molly played in the, one of the Christmas specials. And just a fun accordion. So that's the Potosa Artista accordion. <laughs> This is my New York pan accordion. And the reason why I say it's a New York pan accordion, this was made in New York in the 1950s. Uh, it's an older accordion that I recently had restored uh, by my good friend Chad Walker at Walker Accordion. What I like about this accordion is it's dry tuning. A lot of you might recognize this looks familiar because America's polka king, Frankie Yankovic, played this same kind of pan accordion. Other greats, such as Joey Miskelin, David Austin, and many others also love the sound of the pan accordion. Um, what I like about it, as I mentioned, is the dry sound. I also love the way that the switch, the high switch, the three highs, really cuts through. Um, so if I do a nice little waltz. <laughs> Or on a nice polka. So that's my uh, New York pan accordion. One of the reasons why I have these different accordions is each one has a unique sound and are used in different styles of music. So this would be more traditionally used in a Slovenian style or even in some swing stuff, whereas my Potosa would be more suited for classical music or standard polkas. My Red Potosa, on the other hand, might be more suited towards um, Oberkreiner or German music or even uh, Italian to a certain degree. Uh, so that's the reason why I have the different accordions. I use them all on the different recordings that we've done all at different spots. They just kind of inflect a different feeling and a different sound and a different texture into the music. So we thank Ted for his time today. I hope you learned a lot about the accordion. Any final thoughts, Ted, you want to say to everyone? No, check out Potosa.com. Make sure you check out Chad or WalkerAccordion.com. Um, great people, great customer service, great products. Um, just love the Potosa accordions. Yeah. We're also going to leave links below um, how to order all the recordings that Ted is playing accordion on. Awesome. All right. Thank you, everyone, for listening. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.